Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. AMD Zen 3 processors are now available and the lowest price 5000 series chip offered at launch is the Ryzen 5 5600X. This has seen a price increase over previous generations of Ryzen 5 products coming in at $300. In the past, we saw Ryzen 5s launch anywhere between $200 and $250, so that's a pretty noticeable increase. Most people compare the 5600X with either the 3600 or the 3600X since it's their direct successor, uh, but given the price increase, I think it's also worth comparing it to the next step up in the product stack from the last generation, the Ryzen 7 3700X, which launched almost a year and a half ago at $330 but now it's been reduced to around $300 at the time of the Zen 3 launch. So if you're in the market right now for a new processor and you've budgeted around $300 for it, should you go with the previous generation with the higher core and thread count or should you go with the newer generation with the improved architecture and everything that comes along with it? That's what I wanted to take a look at in this video so let's check it out right after this. If you're looking to start yourself off with a solid gaming PC that's completely built, tested, and ready to go out of the box, NZXT Builds got you covered. They have a wide range of systems that can fit your needs and budget, starting as low as $700. NZXT Build uses quality off-the-shelf brand name parts that can easily be upgraded online, and along with that, they have fair build fees, part pricing, and include a two-year warranty that backs the parts, labor, and RAM overclocking on all their builds. My personal favorite for beginners is their starter series at $700, but this Black Friday, they're running a 10% sale on all pre-builds, custom builds, and extra accessories. This brings their starter PC down to only $630. If you're interested in checking it out, be sure to click the link in the description down below. And now, back to the video. Here's a brief overview of both processors side by side. The Ryzen 7 3700X leads in core and thread count and has a larger L2 cache, but the Ryzen 5 5600X has higher base and boost clocks while also featuring the new and improved Zen 3 architecture, which comes with higher instructions per clock and improved topology that unifies the L3 cache to reduce core to core latency. So the 32MB of L3 cache shown side by side here are not equal, it's improved with Zen 3. I tested both processors alongside the following components. The motherboard I'd use is the ASUS TUF Gaming X570 Plus. This is one of the lower cost X570 boards, but it still offers good overclocking capabilities and has decently sized heat sinks to adequately cool the VRMs. For CPU cooling, I went with the Scythe Ninja 5 Air Cooler. This is an absolute unit of a tower cooler that's priced very well considering its performance, featuring 6 heat pipes and two 120mm fans in push-pull configuration, both of which top out at 900 RPM, which results in them being practically silent even at full speed while doing a great job at cooling the CPU. For memory, there's 32GB of Team Group Excalibur RGB RAM running at 3600MHz. The graphics card of choice is the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, which was overclocked by 125MHz on the core and 500MHz on the memory. All this was tested on an open-air test bench, aka the X570 motherboard box. Very sophisticated. I overclocked both processors, pushing for as high as overclocks as I could while meeting two criteria. The first was that the voltage could not be set higher than 1.325 volts, and the second one was that I wouldn't push the all-core overclock higher than the advertised single-core boost clock. I did this because I think it would be representative of overclocks that most people would be able to achieve with both of these chips. For the 3700X, that resulted in a 4.3 GHz all-core, which was just shy of the advertised 4.4 GHz single-core boost. And for the 5600X, I was able to hit the advertised 4.6 GHz single-core boost except on all the cores with no issues. I tested both games and workload applications. Let's start off with the results for gaming, which were all tested at 1080p as that's the resolution that we'll see the most notable differences between these two. First off, we have Rainbow Six Siege. Here we see an impressive 413 FPS average with the 3700X, but the 5600X comes in with an even more impressive 548 FPS average, which is a 33% improvement. Now you may argue that the 3700X would be plenty capable for high refresh rate gaming, as the average 1% and 0.1% lows are all well above what you'd need for even the best of monitors, so we'll see what that gap looks like on other titles that aren't running this ridiculously high of frame rates. In CSGO, the 3700X scores an impressive 240fps average at max settings and respectable 1% and 0.1% lows, but the 5600X sees yet another big improvement over it with a 322fps average which is a 34% increase with similar gains seen in the 1% and 0.1% performances. In Apex Legends, we see the 3700X hold its own, performing on par with the 5600X at 286fps average. There is a 1fps difference here, but I'll say that that's chalked up to margin of error as I ran this test multiple times to ensure that the performance was indeed that close and that was verified. 
while the averages are practically the same, the 3700X does see a slight lead in the 1% and 0.1% lows though, but you could say that the 5600X still achieves well over 144 FPS for both these metrics, so whether or not that's a meaningful difference is really up to you. In Call of Duty Warzone, the 5600X averaged 233 FPS, which was a 9% increase over the 3700X, which averaged 213 FPS. But we can see here that even at 1080p, the 3080 is starting to creep up near its max utilization compared to the processors. That being said, it is consistently being utilized a bit more across the entire run when it's paired with the 5600X compared to the 3700X. In Death Stranding, the 5600X averaged 181 FPS, which gave it a 19% lead over the 3700X, which averaged 152 FPS. Even though Death Stranding was running at a lower frame rate than their previous titles, there was still a decent gap between the two processors. You can see that the 5600X was notably less of a bottleneck as the 3080 was being utilized pretty consistently at 70 to 80 percent when it was paired with it, whereas it was only utilized in the mid 60 percent when paired with the 3700X. The last game tested was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a brand new title that boasts a huge open world with gorgeous graphics that will bring many high-end systems to their knees. Here the graphics card is doing most of the heavy lifting and the gap is pretty narrow with the 5600X averaging 89 FPS which is only 7% better than the 3700X which averaged 83 FPS. 1% and 0.1% performance were also very close and the graphics card utilization was almost identical across the board hovering anywhere between 90 to 95% usage when paired with either processor. Now let's shift gears and take a look at the workload tests. In the new Cinebench R23, the 3700X edges out the 5600X, scoring in the low 13,000s compared to the 5600X, scoring just shy of 12,000, giving the 3700X a 12% lead. In single core, however, the 5600X leads by 19% with a score in the 1500s, whereas the 3700X scores just shy of 1300. In the Blender benchmark, I tested version 2.9 and ran all 6 tests using the processor as the device to benchmark, and the 3700X had a total combined time of 42 minutes and 32 seconds. The 5600X trailed it by almost exactly 6 minutes, which works out to be a 14% increase in the required rendering time. In the V-Ray Next benchmark, the 3700X scored 14,310, leading by 8% over the 5600X, which scored 13,263. And last but not least, we have Adobe Premiere Pro, which out of all these workload applications is the most relevant for me personally because that's what I use to edit these videos for YouTube. I rendered a 4K video using source footage of my very first video uploaded to the Neuron Budget channel. It's roughly a 9 minute video and I created 5 different layers and applied different effects to each of those layers. I rendered with the default YouTube 4K preset which has a target bitrate of 40 megabits per second. I initially switched on rendering at maximum depth and using maximum render quality. First, I tested using software encoding because I wanted to only test the CPUs and both processors were only 6 seconds apart with the 5600X having the slightest of leads. Now, it's more realistic that people buying CPUs in this price range will have a fairly capable graphics card to pair with them, in which case there would be no reason not to take advantage of hardware encoding. So running a second test with hardware encoding turned on, we pretty much see the same outcome where the two results are within a few seconds of each other, except this time the 3700X has a slight lead. Here's a recap of all the tests. As you can see, the results are kind of all over the place depending on the game or application. It does, however, support what we know regarding core count versus clock speed and IPC, which is why the 5600X takes the lead in most of the gaming tests and the 3700X leads in most of the workload applications. If you were to ask me at this very moment which one of these two I'd rather have in my system, I would probably have a slight lean towards the 5600X. It's the newer processor and it just always feels better to buy the most current gen stuff if it's available. We're also talking about no price difference between the two, right? If there was a price difference, it would be a different story. But for me in particular, Premiere Pro is kind of the only core and thread heavy application that I use and there was no difference between these two. So it would be nice to have the better frame rate for gaming from the 5600X. With that said though, with regards to pricing, I do think both of these are somewhat overpriced at the moment. The 3700X should be discounted even more because it's a year and a half old by this point, but right now it's sitting at only 10% below its launch MSRP. And on the other hand, the 5600X kind of took us by surprise by launching at a $300 price tag when it was around 200 to 250 before in the previous generations. So in an ideal world, both of these would be sitting at like $250 right now. 
Um, but that's definitely not the case. And it's kind of because of the weird time frame we're in right now with COVID kind of messing everything up. And we have like a shortage of supply, which is doing us no favors. You can't even say that the Ryzen 5 3600 is a much better buy right now either because that's over a year old at this point and it's currently hard to find it at its launch price of $200. In fact, it's constantly going for well above that right now as I'm even making this video. So yeah, everything kind of just sucks right now, but it is what it is. You saw the results and you heard my opinion. Now I want to hear what your thoughts are on which one you would personally go with between these two and why. I'm really curious as to the different perspectives that everyone has out there. I'm sure you can make an argument for either of these two, depending on who you are and what your use case is. They come in pretty close, uh, so definitely let me know down below. Other than that though, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And I want to thank you all as always for watching and supporting the channel. And I look forward to seeing you all down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.